brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. It is time once again for us to revisit the messages of Father Malachi Martin. And for those of you who are skeptical of him because of the smear campaigns run against him, I have addressed those in the past. I'm skeptical because there's always a Jesuit connected to them. And given that he wrote a book called The Jesuits, and right after he wrote that book, the uh, attacks on him began in full force, usually coming from Jesuits or people connected directly to them. I'm skeptical, <laughs> to put it mildly. This is an organization that he demonstrates in his work is fully capable of fabricating things against people. And then they did just that. So anyway, I'm not going to buy those comments. I'm not going to buy those attacks on him. I've spoken to people who knew him personally, several of them, and I'll take their word for his character. Thank you very much. Today we're going to talk about Father Malachi Martin's messages about the state of the church leading into the three days of darkness. And he doesn't have a huge amount to say, so what I'm going to do at the end is tie it to a message about the three days of darkness that is not widely known from a mystic that most of you have never heard of. And if you would like her message brought more fully, I can do a separate video on that in the future. So let me know. The messages that, that what Father Malachi Martin spoke about with the three days of darkness is a little different than what you're used to from Marie Julie Jeheni and a few others, because he does speak about the danger of trying to be out and about during the three days without light. But what he talks about makes clear that there would be two separate events at least a more mild three days of darkness because of how he talks about what comes afterwards, and then a hint at the one that you're more familiar with. Let's begin here with the state of the church, though, and the third secret of Fatima, because this ties in. So according to Father Martin, John Paul II in Fulda, Germany, in 1980, was surrounded by a special group of Catholics, and they were in a typical conference-sized room. According to him, he says, quote, I was there. And they were allowed to ask him, John Paul II, questions directly face-to-face, -face, unrehearsed. It was not a press conference, just question and answer. And they said to him, Holy Father, have you read the secret? And he said, Yes, I have. I've read it twice. And they said, Will you tell us what is in it? And he said, No, I won't. And they said, Is it bad? Are there chastisements? He said, I can't answer that because if I answer that question, it will be sensational. He said, supposing I was to tell you that Florence would float away, and that there were going to be three days of darkness, and that one whole nation would be wiped out completely, wiped out, and that the sun would be darkened for another five days, and that most of the earth would be afflicted with uh, affliction, similar, if not exactly the same as what we experienced in 2020, that they couldn't cure but could live with. And supposing that all the volcanoes erupted, what would you call that? They said, sensational. And he said, so what's the point of telling you that? And then they said, well, Holy Father, are there punishments? He said, there are punishments. And they said, can we avert those punishments? And he said, no, you can't. It's too late. He said, you can mitigate them. And then he took his rosary out of his pocket and said, say that. It's the only protection you have. Say that. Every day of your life, meaning the rosary, folks, it's the only protection. And they said, within what time limit? And he said, I can't answer that. And they said, well, why can't you publish the letter? And he said, because if I publish that, that letter, and here's the interesting part, it would give an edge to the adversaries from the Cold War that the West could not resist. There is information in it which is vital to the defense of the West. End quote. I'll go more into the Cold War adversaries and their role in our time in the talk I do in February or March on the evil program of our rulers that Malachi Martin warned about. He was uh, skeptical that our Cold War adversaries actually ever surrendered because he had information otherwise they were up to something. And we're probably seeing it now. But that country figures prominently in that talk. But let's move on to the Three Days of Darkness itself. In an interview with Bernard Jansen in 1997, Father Malachi said the following, quote, Today, unfortunately, the denial of Christ's revelation is abroad in the church, in the organization. That's the difficulty. I always point out to people, even non-Catholics, 
there is a distinction between the union of all believers who are practicing their faith and the organization which vehicles that. The Roman Catholic Church is the ideal vehicle for believers in Christ, but it's only an organization and it's fading. And one of the sub-themes of Windswept House is that in a short time, humanly speaking, there will be no Holy Roman Catholic or Church organization. There won't be any, and we must deal with that. End quote. Provocative statement that the visible church will go away. How can the visible church as an institution disappear? How could that possibly be, you might ask? It is replaced by the ape of the church, as Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich warned about in numerous myth prophecies I've warned of. In those various prophecies that I've presented before, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich warns that the some sort of internal adversary of the church, she gave these warnings a century before the crisis of modernism appeared, would infiltrate the church, subvert it, tear down the institution, and build a false edifice over the ruins of the church, making it look like, well, building an ape of the church, building a false edifice, this fake church that calls itself the Catholic Church, but is not the Catholic Church. Apparently, Fulton Sheen had read, the, had read Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich in some capacity because he warned of this too. It's where I get the term ape of the church from. That they would build something that looks Catholic but divine, emptied of its divine essence. That is what Father Malachi Martin is clearly talking about here. It's worth noting that Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich in her various warnings about this said that ultimately they would fail and the ape of the church would come tumbling down and that the church would be restored. All of that, though, leads to this what Father Malachi Martin warned about in this conversation he had with Art Bell in 1996. He implies that there will be two sun-darkening events, the first of which will be a warning for everyone preceding the second, the more infamous three days of darkness. Perhaps this is the warning that he spoke about in the last video I did on Father Malachi Martin, which if you didn't see, came out in December. Here Art Bell asks the question, Doctor, meaning Father Martin, three days of darkness? Malachi says, yes. There's no doubt about it. There's going to be three days when there is a great darkness over our earth and during which it will be dangerous to be abroad. Be outside your home and even in your home, it may be dangerous. Our bell responds, three days without the sun. Father Martin responds, three days without the natural light we're used to, yes, without that. But it's like everything else. When it takes place, they, meaning the forces of the world, our rulers, will endeavor to give it an astronomical and geophysical explanation, end quote. Two events here. He's talking about the first one. In other words, most people will survive the first event. The powers of the world will try to give a purely natural explanation for a purely supernatural event. The next year, Father Martin went into more details about this in another interview he gave to Art Bell. So here is Art Bell asking the question. Father, we talked some time ago about three days of darkness. You said it would be dangerous to be abroad, outside your home, or even inside your home. Somebody is asking, what is the nature of the danger? Is it civil, natural, spiritual? Good question. You have many of you watching this have asked that same question. Malachi Martin responds, quote, it is spiritual. That particular prophetic fact is based on a private revelation which churchmen have accepted, made in various places. In the year 1846 in La Salette, France, and in Fatima, Portugal in 1917, and then in various other places since then. Note here, he says the three days of darkness is mentioned in the third secret. And it concerns the arrival of a final chastisement, a punishment from God to purify men and women, to prepare them for entry into heaven. Not rapture-like according to one evangelical theory, but actually the end of the world. It's not exactly around the corner, Art. It's at a time when a figure called the Antichrist is abroad, and it's a very complicated issue, the whole thing. The actual danger itself during those three days of total darkness over the earth, the dimming of the sun completely, and no light. It's a time when the last efforts of the demons to run our lives and to take souls away from the salvation that Christ has worked out, end quote. Other mystics have said the same thing, that when you, during the three days of darkness, this will be the final push by the demons to capture souls. If you think about this, though, the Antichrist in the three days of darkness, he felt those events were near, but not immediately at hand. Granted, that was in 1998. That's about all he said on the subject, though. 
I'll take this opportunity now to present another Three Days of Darkness message, one that is mostly unknown to most people watching this, from a church-approved mystic on her way to canonization, and that is Blessed Anna Maria Taiji, who was beatified by Pope Benedict XV during the First World War. The beatification process includes examining all of the potential mystical experiences and alleged messages they received. Having done that investigation, the Holy Office gave the Pope, Benedict XV, the seal of approval for her beatification. That's worth noting here, folks. She passed the smell test with a Three Days of Darkness message. So here's Blessed Anna Maria Taigi's Three Days of Darkness message, part of a larger message she had. There shall come over the whole earth an intense darkness, lasting three days and three nights. Nothing will be able to be seen, and the air will be laden with pestilence, which will claim mainly, but not only, the enemies of religion. It will be impossible to use any man-made light during this darkness, except blessed candles. He who, without, who out of curiosity opens his window to look out or leaves his home will drop on the spot. During these three days, people should remain in their homes praying the Holy Rosary and begging God for mercy. All the enemies of the church, known and unknown, will perish over the whole earth during that universal darkness, with the exception of a few whom God will soon convert. The air shall be infested by demons who will appear under all sorts of hideous forms. Blessed Anna Maria Taiji goes on to tell how the three days will end with a triumph of heaven. Quote, after the three days of darkness, Saints Peter and Paul, having come down from heaven, will preach throughout the world and designate a new pope. A great light will flash from their bodies and will settle upon the future pontiff. There shall be innumerable conversions of heretics who will return to the bosom of the church. All will note the edifying conduct of their lives as well as of all other Catholics the country that is the aggressor in the conflict that the media is obsessed with right now, England and the Middle Kingdom will come to the church. End quote. I have my doubts that Peter and Paul will literally come down from heaven in the flesh like Elias and Enoch to choose a new pontiff, but I'm prepared to be wrong about that. I suspect that their hand will be at play in the post-chastisement restoration of the visible church to such a degree that it becomes obvious to everyone that the truly miraculous and heavenly forces are at work. But that message of Blessed Taiji is part of a larger message that makes it clear that she is talking about the present crisis in the church that has been ongoing since at least the 1950s. I mean, more than a century, honestly, since Pius X wrote Ascendi detailing this crisis back in 1907. But let me know if you want Blessed Anna Maria Taiji's full message in its own video. I can do that with some analysis. Also, I am preparing to put together my synthesis of not only all Marian ap major Marian apparitions that had prophetic warnings, but also a separate synthesis video on all of the, or as many of the approved private revelations from various mystics throughout history about the chastisement. And you will see that they are very similar messages indeed. But I'm curious what you thought about what Father Malachi Martin had to say here, as well as Blessed Anna Maria Taiji and her message. And remember, with Blessed Anna Maria Taiji, this is private revelation. You are not required to believe this if you don't want to. It's perfectly fine to have doubts about it. And remember also our, what our Lord warned about false prophets and things in the Bible. A lot of people should remember that, especially when dealing with contemporary mystics running around on the internet right now, trying to tell you that they've had personal revelations from God. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help, as does sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. A special thank you to the person, to the member of the audience here who shared this, who put together a lot of these messages for me from various different sources. It is appreciated. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.